Okay, so here's a note that I created in the Samsung Notes app. Now, before I email this, I want to add a picture of a table to this note, you know, just for reference. But the picture that I want to add is on my other smartphone. So check this out. Instead of sending the photo over, what we can do is open the photo in the gallery, tap on these three dots and then select copy to clipboard. And now on this phone, we can long press and paste. And boom, you can see that the photo that we copied on our other smartphone is now on this smartphone as well. So this is the shared clipboard functionality between Samsung smartphones. This even works for text. So if you copy some text on this phone, you will be able to paste it onto the other one. Awesome feature, right? Trust me, this is gonna make your life a lot easier. Now this feature is switched off by default so you will have to enable it by going into the settings then connected devices and then here switch on continue apps on other devices. Now keep in mind for this feature to work both of the devices need to be signed in into the same Samsung account and also have their Wi-Fi and Bluetooth switched on. Alright, so next, here is what I want you guys to do. Head on into your gallery and then tap on the search button. And here you will see the faces of people that the phone has identified. And you can tap on a face to see all the pictures that the person is in. That is extremely useful, right? Now, the thing that you want to do is assign names to whoever the face belongs to. Like, this is my face and we can tap here to tell the phone that hey, this face belongs to Charlie. And you guys already know that the phone's gallery is integrated into the main search engine of the phone, which you can find by opening up the app drawer and then tapping here. So the biggest advantage of adding the person's name in the gallery is that you can search for the photos in the main search engine for photos that the person is in. So here you can see the phone is showing us all of the photos in which I appear, which will make searching for photos a lot easier. So you want to do this for every face that the phone has identified, which is eventually going to make organizing photos a lot easier. Now, if you haven't already, you might want to enable the option which lets you scroll in full screen in the gallery. Look how awesome the gallery looks. So if you want your gallery to look like this while you are scrolling, go to the gallery settings by tapping on these three lines and then select settings. Over here, enable full screen scrolling. So after enabling this, you will be able to scroll in full screen through your gallery. It just makes the gallery look super cool. Oh, and one more thing that I've noticed is that by default, the gallery does not show you every album that's on your phone. You'll have to tap on view all to see all your albums. And this can get very confusing at times. However, you can tap on these three dots and then tap on select essential albums and check the boxes of the albums that you want to see when you are in the album tab of your gallery. Now, if you don't like this feature, you can always switch it off by tapping on the hamburger menu and then going to the gallery settings and switching off select essential albums. Now the gallery is going to show you all the folders or albums that are on your phone. However, you still have the option to hide individual albums by going into this menu. So it's kind of pointless to have two similar features. So why not switch one of these off to avoid confusion? Now let me show you a security feature which was introduced with One UI 6. So what you want to do is head on into the settings and then scroll down to security and privacy. Inside scroll down and here you'll find a new security feature called auto blocker. So when enabled, this feature is gonna keep your phone safe by number one, blocking apps from unauthorized sources. So I think it disables side loading. Number two, it checks apps for malicious activity. And number three, it blocks command via USB, which I think is super useful. And moreover, it also seems to have some sort of malware protection for messages and the ability to block software updates via USB. So this is a really nice security feature. I would suggest keeping it on unless you're sideloading apps on your phone. Now, if you have the Galaxy S23 series or the Flip 4 or 5, then you want to go into the settings and head on into device care. Here you'll find a setting which says performance profile and you want to change this to light. And this setting will make your battery last longer and the phone will also generate less heat. 
and I think this works by underclocking the CPU but you're not gonna notice any difference on these newer phones because the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is quite fast even in the light processing mode. And the reason why I've shown you this again is because on One UI 5.1 this setting used to be inside battery under more battery settings. Meanwhile, on One UI 6, it's right here inside device here. So the location has changed. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is, in the device care, tap on battery, and here, enable the protect battery feature. Now, if your phone is still running One UI 5.1, then you'll need to go into more battery settings, and here you will find the protect battery feature. So this feature limits the maximum charge level to 85% and the phone is gonna pause charging as soon as the battery level hits 85. And the phone is gonna tell you charging paused, protect battery limits you to 85%. So the thing is, lithium batteries degrade faster when they are charged up to 100%. So by limiting the maximum charge level to 85%, you can technically help extend the lifespan of the battery for a little bit longer. And limiting the charge level is also beneficial if you leave your phone plugged in overnight because then it's gonna stop charging at 85%. So I think it is a good idea to turn this feature on but if you want to charge your phone to 100%, say for example if you are going out and you won't have a charger with you, then hey, turn this feature off no problem. But if you are staying at home and have a charger accessible, then keeping this feature on is a good idea. One more setting that you should absolutely enable is the auto restart feature. So in the device care, tap on auto optimization and then auto restart. Inside, switch on auto restart when needed. Now your phone will automatically restart whenever it detects that it's having performance issues. And if you'd like, you can also set your own restart schedule. I usually prefer the phone to restart on Monday 3 a.m. so that the phone is nice and fresh, ready for the week. Now, one feature which is completely unnecessary and should be switched off is the RAM Plus. And you'll find it inside memory and there it is. So this feature uses the main flash memory as the system RAM. And by default, this is set to 8GB, which I think is completely unnecessary on a phone like the S23 Ultra because it's already got 12GB of dedicated system RAM. So it's a good idea to switch this off because you're gonna gain 8GB of additional storage and it will also save your flash memory from additional wear and tear. You should also enable the option to show the names of apps in the apps edge panel. This is quite useful in my opinion because it will let you know exactly which apps are there. So to enable this feature, you will need to go to the edge panel settings. It's pretty easy. Just open the apps edge panel and then tap on the gear button. Under the apps edge panel, tap on edit, then tap on these three dots and here enable show app names. Now you will be able to see the names of the apps in the apps edge panel. Very useful. So next, let's add the Bixby Vision widget by pinching in on the home screen, then widgets, Bixby Vision, and I want you guys to add the modes widget. And this widget is awesome. First off, it contains a real-time text translator which is very similar to Google Translate. So as you can see, it will translate text in real time which can be very useful when you're traveling abroad. There's also a text scanner that you can use to copy text from physical documents and paste the text anywhere on your phone. You can even send them as a text message. Awesome, right? And it also has an image search feature. So if you want to find out more information about something, you can just take a photo and search for it. Now if you feel like the home screen is getting too crowded, you can combine two widgets in a single one. It is very simple, just drag and drop the widgets on top of each other and you will see both of them will combine, giving us two widgets inside of a single one. Awesome! So this will allow you to save space and have more widgets on the home screen. You also might have noticed that I've got more than 5 icons in the bottom row. However, if you try to add more than 5 icons on your Samsung phone, you will not be able to do so. So how is adding more than 5 icons possible? Well, this is through an add-on called the Good Lock. 
and this is something that you must have on your Samsung smartphone because it will unlock additional customization. So what you want to do is head on into the Galaxy Store and download GoodLock. Once you do, open it and inside look for the Home Up module. So in the Home Up module, you want to go to the Home Screen Settings and then Favorite Max Count and change this to how many icons you want to fit at the bottom of the screen. But I think the sweet spot is 6 or 7. So now you'll be able to add more than 5 icons in the bottom row. You can also do the same for the icons that appear on the home screen as well as on the app's screen grid. So in the home up module you want to go into home screen and then home screen grid. So right now it is set to 5 into 6 that is 5 icons in the horizontal row and 6 in the vertical row. I think 6 into 6 is a good idea because then you'll be able to fit 6 icons horizontally on the home screen. And if you want to fit more icons on the app's screen, you can tweak them from the app's screen grid setting. And this is a personal choice, so please tweak this as per your liking. And just like the icons on the home screen, you can have more or less icons in the quick panel. To make this change, you will need to download the quick star module in GoodLock. And once you do, enable it. Now, the setting that changes the number of buttons in the quick panel is this one. Moving the slider to wide will increase the space between the icons, making less icons available on a single page. And sliding towards narrow will decrease the space, thus allowing you to fit more icons in the quick panel. So you want to make changes according to what you feel is comfortable for your eyes. Now in the home up module, another thing that you should do is head on into the folder options and enable the pop up folder. So what happens is when you open a folder on your home screen, it kind of takes over the entire screen of the phone. But when you enable this option and then open the folder, you'll see that it opens in a pop up and it doesn't take over the entire screen. And I think this is a far better option. Alright, so next you want to go into the GoodLock app and then tap on Life Up. And here, download and install the Nice Shot module. Once you do, open it and enable the Add Delete button option. So now when you take a screenshot, you'll notice a dedicated delete button in the screenshot panel. Very, very useful. Now, if you want the colors of the phone to match with that of the wallpaper, what you want to do is pinch in on the home screen and go to wallpaper and style. Tap on color palette and enable this feature. And what this feature does is that it picks out the colors that are in the wallpaper and uses them as the theme of your phone. So look at the preview and pick the color palette that you like. Once you are done, you will notice that the theme of your phone will match the colors of your wallpaper, which is really awesome. So you give your phone to someone maybe because they want to make a phone call or browse the web. But instead, they open your gallery and start browsing through your personal photos. And they also might open your messaging app and check out all your private chats. Yikes. Well, to prevent this exact thing from happening, you can enable a feature called Pin App, which will prevent your naughty friends from accessing your gallery and any other app on your phone. So for example, your friend wants to browse the web. So before you hand over your phone to them, open the Recents menu and then tap on the app icon. From this list, select Pin This App. And this will pin the app on the screen and they will not be able to access anything else on your Galaxy smartphone. So you can see nothing happens even if I press the home or the back button. So this is a really powerful privacy feature. Now to unpin the app, press and hold the recents and the back button together. And now to access the phone, you will have to enter your biometrics. So there you go. Now everything is back to normal. Now this feature is disabled by default so you will have to enable that by going into the settings and then security and privacy. Inside you want to head on into more security settings and once again scroll down and enable pin app. Okay so let's keep the video nice and short it's been a really long week and as always if you have enjoyed make sure to hit the like button, share the video and subscribe to the channel for more content. And this is Tech Guy Charlie signing off.